Welcome to the Turf Report with Sam and Jess. Let's go. Welcome to the Turf Report with yeah. Sam and Jess and our special guest, our fourth ever guest. I oh believe. my gosh. It's been special. Uh, Lin- Wait, so fifth, special. because Rachel. Hold on. Okay, yeah. So we have and six, Nate so Jackson. Should we introduce... <laughs> I want to talk Should about all the other guests. all of the other guests that we've gone <laughs> yeah. through before so we we've had this Rachel FJ, Nate yeah. Jackson, my mom, my wife, and now... Uh, you, forgot Lynette. Lynette. you forgot Lynette. And Lynette Manning. <laughs> oh, she's gonna be <laughs> yeah, because you know Lynette. Um, <laughs> my old friend, musician, poker player, what? dancer. Um, dancer? He does a lot of stuff. Give it up for my friend, Mark Bowen. Oh, thank you, thank you. AKA, AKA. I was really sad when you added the last name because now I am on to the second hand. I really wanted to be on the first hand of guests. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. so you added Lynette. And yeah, they, they just dumped me to the second hand. Yep, you, you're, you're you're a thumb. You're <laughs> part part two. Yeah, yeah. That's like, at least it's better than going to the third hand, right? Which, which most people don't have. So yeah, I don't. Most people, I don't. I know some of them cats. What would you call? Who? What would you call them? Just and third hand Luke. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing a video when I was a teenager of a guy with two wieners, and it was called Dual Meat. And I was like, "Huh? I guess this is Tuesday." That- <laughs> the internet was messed up, man. I was like, huh. yeah, well, needed to see that. Well, were you googling it? Yeah, I Google? probably shouldn't go. I was Googling Dual dude meat. with two wieners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he did hang out with the, the girl with three titties on Total Recall. Ooh. Oh. That, that was really traumatizing for me. <laughs> I bet he was like, <laughs> I think you were made for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't, I mean, I just don't know how, mm, how inappropriate gonna, I could be, but. Well, it's our, um, well, Sam's I here. I got that pitchfork dick. <laughs> I mean. What's a pitch? Was that part of the movie? I never saw it. No, you well, never, never seen Total Recall. No, I did see Total Recall as a kid. I remember it. That was so I was like one of my childhood movies. Yeah, that we grew. I grew up on Total Recall and the best little whorehouse in Texas. Sweet. Yeah. All right, so we can say things like whore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can okay. you can say whore. I mean, it. Well, it depends on like what kind of whore. Gotcha. Like, is it a um, Never mind. Let, me, let me thwack that thing again. Give this a little redo. Start no. over. No, this um, is um, my. Can I introduce Mark? Yeah, I wish you would. Okay. Um, so I have known Mark since I was, I think, 20, 19 or 20. Started coming downtown. Mark has seen me at my lowest uh, and vice versa. I've seen Mark in his various struggles. And then now we are both doing very well. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty wild. Um, have a uh, yeah. He is. Um, he was part of a hip hop crew back in the day called uh, Hostalian, um, who which was kind of. Um, would you say you were innovators of hip hop in Olympia? What else was going on before you guys? Um, I would say that we were probably the original five around for sure. Yeah, I don't. Is there a big hip hop community in? Well, there wasn't until and you guys. I mean, there was uh, there was other people that was down there like the Saints of Everyday Failures, mm-hmm. um, SP Uncommon. There, you know, there's a group, but there was a big facet and a big push that really created the hip hop scene down there, and there wasn't much of it before then, for sure. It felt like your um, your the rise of of you and and those folks downtown for me um kind of coincided with the rise of like uh rap music becoming more popular as a whole as well definitely i and i and i feel like i benefited from the golden era of hip hop too right yeah like, for it sure. was like the best underground time in the hip hop community and it w- it's it was literally the most optimal time to be able to push hip hop, especially in the city. So it was a good alignment of the planets for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, because when was that? How old are you? Are you guys the same age? 
I think Mark's a little. Are you? Are you a little bit older? Are you a little like a year older than that? I I am your elder. Yeah, by Ooh. what? Like two years. I'm, okay. I'm forty two, and I turned forty three July 9th. I have yeah. the same birthday as OJ Simpson. <laughs> oh, nice! Oh. You're and, just talking about OJ. Mm. Tom Hanks. Oh, nice! So I have a good. Mix. I like how that you have say but you like say OJ first. It balances out. So, <laughs> like <laughs> you have the option of Hanks. You know what's you really with. awesome about that? <laughs> I I definitely lead with OJ every time. Yeah. Tom Hanks <laughs> never gets the opening. Of scene, course. Ever. Mm. We have our visitor here, by the way. This is Mr. Man. This is Mr. the other Man one. Yeah, he's been hi. literally attacking me under the table, oh. grabbing my jacket because I have two boy cats at home. So, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. He's, yeah. He's the, very kind. Do you remember when we met? Do you remember first impressions or anything like that? Um, The number one thing that I remember about you from the very beginning was... And a lot of people that know you nowadays will never, ever get the I'm kind of worried about this. I got to let you know. I no, thought about it, this before. I already it's, know. Well, it's yeah. going to be something you don't like. Well, it no, it's not going to It's not gonna be something that he doesn't you like. But have. I just feel like a lot of people that know him will never get to hear it. And he had the, the most craziest voice. And I think it was because, you know, when he was going through his, his time with the extracurricular activity drugs, the the... I think the drip <laughs> destroyed his voice, and so like, he, what do you mean? He had no voice. He, I can uh, still he do talk it. like this, like he talk like this, and Ew. I never, yeah. <laughs> Don't you? Ew. I'm a human I have, being. <laughs> <laughs> like, you yeah. were back then too. You, I know. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you weren't then. You were like, you were. Yeah. Oh, good. He's but right it, it's interesting because for the first two and a half three years maybe that I knew him, I never got to hear his real voice like we hear it today. Hmm. It was, uh, so anytime he would come into an establishment and <laughs> it'd be like, rah, 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 and the oh whole, the whole <laughs> <He's on> a- <laughs> and the whole bar is like, oh God, Sam's here. <laughs> yeah. Sam asking for mashed potatoes. Yeah, it's just like, anytime he came around, we just knew it from that voice. So I just, one of my first impressions was like, this big guy that couldn't vibrate his vocal cords very, well. <laughs> very well. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was very sling. Um, and it was, but worse. Are, it was worse. It was worse. <laughs> so, I think so large. it was a combination of just trashing my throat mm-hmm. with methamphetamine, um, especially using methamphetamine while I was blacked out, drunk, and like. Um, Honestly, just taking hot breaths of fucking, it was bad, dude. Yeah, it was crazy. And I remember, because it happened sort of gradually over like the course of like maybe like six months, it's like my voice was doing this thing. And then one day, um, I remember that I was like, oh, like, I was like, I'm stuck like this. Because <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I, I used to come in too. The other thing was I was on one all the time, like, if you saw me and I was in public, that meant I was high and I was tripping out and I was I was having a good time. And he needed a cigarette. And I needed a cigarette. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. I would be, and then when I was down, I would hide and I would go places where people didn't know know how to find me. Sometimes I'd hide at my mom's house. Sometimes I'd go out on Trosper Road. But I would walk into these bars and I'd be like, Big Sam, <laughs> say my own name. Oh my god! Because everybody called me Big Sam. So. Right? No, I'm, you put that together. There's no lies detected. Yeah, no yeah. Lies detected. And it was um, they were living in a house by the Lotto office. And do you remember? We should talk about it because I have a joke about it. Uh, my my living situation at the time. Uh, yeah, it was tough, but I. But before we move on, I definitely wanted to say that when I lived up on this house on Plum Street, that we're eventually going to get to that conversation. But I lived with a bunch of hip hoppers. We just got our first house. I was like 18 or 19. Yeah. And I wanted to make it very clear that we thought, if, as obnoxious as Sam was to the rest of the city, we love Sam. I was just going imagine, to say, yeah, just I was Im- going to ask if, like, sorry, go ahead. Just imagine just being like a whole bunch of running around kids, hip hop kids, and then 
you find Sam. He was just as hilarious back then. He's always been funny. And so we just loved him. We could care less. That he was a little. That he was. <laughs> <laughs> I was a drug addict. Yeah. Like, like, well, we yeah. Did, yeah, we didn't. I mean, the rest of downtown was as well. Yeah, right? yeah, it was bad. <laughs> right, well, because that's the thing. It's like we're, we're laughing. Um, but was it funny? Like, it probably wasn't. You know what? I like, am. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was Mark. Was Mark funny. is gonna. Mark's gonna be. I have a ninety percent sure that Mark's gonna be with me on this. Is like, yes, there were like a lot of bad times, but there was also these moments of like such extreme beauty and bliss mm-hmm. that like it didn't match up. Like it was still more bad than good for me personally. Mm-hmm. Like I was getting locked up a lot. Um, my methamphetamine addiction was really starting to spiral. I was about to go to job core. I didn't know that then, but I was, you know, my mom and my relationship was toast. Mm-hmm. She had kicked me out, which meant yep. that I was moved on to Mark's porch more than full time. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I slept on Mark's porch with his dog, but there was moments, man. I remember nights where me and you, we'd be up somewhere smoking a joint, like, just having these conversations, man, and trying to figure out who the hell we were and what the hell we were going to do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, not to jump, not to jump to shark this quick, but like, look at like, I mean, shit's crazy, man. You're on my podcast. Like our, yeah. it's, it's our podcast. You're on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I, I like literally, I'm like, I'm, I, I, I'm here too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like also, like if your hand blocking me, even, like, even, it's like you literally, like I'm like, hi, hey, like I'm, I'm like looking through to Mark, like I didn't, I haven't even uh, looked at Jess in like not five once. minutes. I'm just yeah. studying Mark. What I'm gonna balance fuck? this out and just look at you. Why you like? Look no, at it's me. sympathy. <laughs> it's total sympathy. It's like, like Jesus Christ. First of all, maybe we should mention like why, um, like we don't just like randomly like have people like on on the podcast um like mark there's there's a reason like he's got some some big things like coming up uh yeah like, i have i'm super excited about it i have an album dropping a hip hop album it's pretty eclectic that drops april 27th at the comedy bar <gasps> what at the co- oh and have you heard of it? I have. You seem like, excited. so amazing. I think that's perfect. Uh, yeah. It's what a great be, combination. Yeah, it's going to be a great spot. I actually really love that venue when I uh, performed the grief show with Emmett and Sam up there. Yeah. yeah. Was, God, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. And I was like, I, I need this spot. About we've, it's got, we've, we've done a lot of improvements since then. So mm-hmm. were you there that night for the grief show? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Man. No. That Just that's crazy. usually the answer is no. Yeah, Mark did, and if people aren't familiar, me and Emmett Montgomery did this sh- do this show called Dead Mom, Dead Dad, a comedy show about grief and sad. And Dead Mom, Dead Dad, Dead Dog, because mm. in between the last time we did it, Emmett's dog died. Um, so we had to add that. <laughs> and uh, we got Mark, we were talking about him doing it before when we were in Olympia, and I just knew, like, if Mark has a – not a challenge, not not like an assignment, but if I'm like, Mark, here's like the mission of this, and you wrote a piece about grief that was stellar, was definitely one of the high points of that oh show. God. That and the lady who was dancing with skeletons. That was really awesome. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was a good night. I really enjoyed that night a lot, and I also loved uh, the venue a lot, so I'm excited to be able to go back there. That is April 27th. Uh, doors at seven you can get pre-sale tickets if you just hop on the website and look under the date of april 27th you should see aka's release for stone bubble love no which i'm super excited about i've got a lot of music exploding out of me over the past three years and this is probably the project in my life i've been making music for about 25 years where i actually got to frolic in tall grass fields when it comes to a music and how i wanted to attack it and so I'm very, very proud of this project, and I want everybody to come out. I got a great night. I got comedians there. I got uh, Emmett there. Nice. Uh, Zane is That's there. already a good show, man. Yeah. Just that, those two. Perfect. And then Smoke M2D6. I got a live painting there. Uh, that We're just going to do a live auction. While she's painting, you'll just be able to see the back of 
the easel the whole time, and then at the end she will show the painting and whoever won it. You know, it's going to be it. great. Yeah, it's going to be. That's going to be time. so awesome. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. We have we have a we have a show that's um, sort of similar to that. That's coming to um, that we're doing. It's like an art gallery show, but it's like they get art from I think like they get it from like Goodwill. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and then they have to, right. and then they have to like, uh, no, and then, okay. If I'm getting the concept right. And then they have to like auction, like the idea is that they get these, these pieces from Goodwill and then they have to present them to the audience and God, get them a, to like auction and get them to buy. Uh, what like, a bad look for a painter. Well, if, like just what a winds up auctioned off in like a gag auction. Yeah, like a good. Well, I mean, They've it was, it was at Goodwill. I mean, yeah, I know. Like just having that, your paintings in Goodwill. They had that kind of one weird. fashion, that fashion week in Europe, where they were like introducing all those shoes, but they were all pay less shoes, and people were like bidding <gasps> thousands and thousands <laughs> of dollars for yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. I yeah, like, it. like um, yeah, same thing. And but then, but then, yeah, somebody. But it's just so freaking like, who comes up with these ideas, like? My brain doesn't work. They're like, oh, I know what I'm going to do for a show. We Or the, even just like the painting where it's like, I'm going to secretly paint and then you're just going to have to fucking <laughs> give me money and hope it's worth it. The, <laughs> and then people the, are like, okay. The grief show came yeah, about. That's true. The grief show came about because both me and yeah. Emmett felt like it was, um, like we had a hard time doing those jokes in regular sets sometimes because. Yeah. People, it's not so much that the jokes weren't funny, it's that people weren't expecting it. And anytime you talk about like grief and that, you know, not to get too heavy too quick, like I usually do, (laughs) but like me and Mark have lost a lot of people like in our like friend group. And uh, it's been like uh, particularly, oh man, like the last what, 10 years? It's been really wild. These are the facts but you know the first half of my life i felt like nobody was dying when we were all young and my parents were younger and yeah you know we were all not dying yeah it was pretty perfect <laughs> <laughs> okay well you're just bragging yeah, yeah that's true but uh, i had to balance it out in my second half of my what are you waiting? I, I, I'm waiting for you. I thought, are you kidding me? I thought, I thought, you, sorry, you were in the middle of crying, and I thought you were going to continue I your didn't cry. thought. You were. No, I wasn't. There was a moment where you, you were your definitely voice, like shaking got all and like. I, I think that yeah, was just some stuff in my throat. I'm really, I'm not like emotional right now. Yeah, oh. it's a it's a very safe space though. Like, it, no, I could oh, if knows. I would. I cry he all the time in here. It's, no, it's a drop of it. Yeah. Dime I've cried crying. on the podcast what like twenty times. I'm sure, and I think cue him <laughs> up, Zach. Yeah, <laughs> I think how many times have I gotten you? Like maybe two, two times. Mm, yeah, Three? maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, that's no. how it goes sometimes, though. But yeah, we're we're open about the shit. Well, yeah, we it have was, emotions uh, here. We do. Emotions it was here. it was it was rough. Um, there was a lot going on um around that time too for both of us i know that i was i remember when um r.i.p casey heath man when casey died um that one was the that one was i think that one for me was the the toughest one um Mm because me and casey were really close casey was one of those folks that was like really good to me so like there's the thing about like mark and these people these like rappers in olympia is it like after i got sober a lot of people started being nice to me because then like the my because I had like a pro and a con column and like pro com like really funny interesting con con I'll steal your shit you know <laughs> <laughs> but I never stole from them um yeah of course. yeah I never stole from them I think I owed somebody some money for some weed but I think I paid him back actually um maybe Ooh. um yeah sorry dude anyway uh once that con I get sober and that con column kind of disappeared And then, like, a lot of people, and I don't, it's not, I'm not, like, I'm not mad at him. It just is what it is. But when we were going through that, um, I was newly sober. I was really struggling because um, I didn't want, I remember that, like, I didn't want, I felt like 
I couldn't grieve with people because other people were like drinking and grieving. Mm. And I felt like really like, like I felt really isolated when that was happening, but you were one of the people. Do you remember what that was like when with you? Just when you were speaking, it just kind of reminded me of what had, uh, what Kendrick Lamar said that you hadn't experienced grief until you experienced it sober. Yeah. Right. And that was super powerful. Um, when you guys introduced the grief show to me, it was when my mom passed away, uh, is when I began drinking heavily, 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 heavily. And so I was able to kind of pack those emotions away and kind of compartmentalize things and just like in chunks go through my grieving, but I never actually really got to grieve. And so that's why that line by Kendrick really hit me. Yeah. So yeah, when yeah. you guys came to me with that grief concept, I was only sober for about a year and a half. And I was actually going through a re-grieving. Yeah. Of my mom passing because now I was just literally having to sit in this, right? And yeah. There's no way to run with it. So it was literally perfect timing for me to be able to address that. Yeah. So uh, I, I was super honored to be on that show. And I, right when you told me about it, I just low key in my head knew exactly what I needed to do. Yeah. And we had been looking. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, no, I was just going to sit. So you're sober. How, how long have you been sober now? I mean, I'm, I'm California, so yeah, that's that okay. counts. We're all right with it's okay. No, we, we've addressed we're allowed, it a lot. Yeah. Right Other than right. Sam, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, what was the question? How long, How long have you been, been sober? sober? I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm sober. I smoke Sorry, pot too. Sorry, it's early. You guys have these pot. I mean, I haven't even been up long. Enough you to haven't even smoked any mood. pot yet. <laughs> oh my god! I haven't even formulated a mood yet. Um. I've been sober since November 23rd, 2021. I'm a, approaching my 900th day. Nice. I'm almost I'm in triple digits. I'm a December baby too. Nice. A December sober baby. We, we, uh, Those are depressing months too. Those are usually the tough. ones that are just like, I'm done. I'm yeah. just <laughs> well, I was like, I'm like, well, let's see. We're going to either go to rehab or we're going to, yeah. let's go. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's maybe rehab it is. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. I felt that. You said something and I don't I don't know I don't think I've ever told this story publicly and definitely haven't talked about it on the podcast, but um when I was uh, I wanna say three or four years sober was when they opened up that new veteran cemetery in five and my mom chose to have my dad like reinterred, like she had his ashes mm -hmm. in an urn mm -hmm. and they reinterred him at a veteran cemetery. Maybe I was like two years sober. I don't know. Maybe it was in 2010 and they had a full, so my dad died when I was 12. So this is, um, I was 25. So we're talking, you know, uh, like 13 years later, we have this veterans. It's good math. Something like that, yeah. I'm, I don't know, it doesn't it might not be good it math. Not I have be. no idea. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. Checks yeah. It, <laughs> it, it checks I'm out. like, hold on, I got <laughs> we, um, we had him reinterred, and it was like the full on like like military funeral, mm. and like the with the twenty one gun salute, and they played mm. taps. Yeah. And I think a lot of my much like you with your mom. I think having my dad die at that young age and already being like twisted up like individual, like just mm -hmm. really struggling with finding any sort of place in the world that would work for me. Um, that, that I don't know what, I don't know where alcoholism starts and stops. I don't know where grief starts and stops and I don't know where my mental health started and stopped, mm. but it was just like, it was like the, the accelerator was stuck down. Yeah. Like I am going to, I don't like, I have no idea where this is going, but I'm going fast, <laughs> like, yeah. you know? And that's what. You got to be hyper aware in those situations. Yeah. That's what it was like for me. Like, and then when I get sober and I, I have this thing, it's like, oh man, I'm working so hard on my recovery. Like good thing. Like nothing bad's going to happen now. And then <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Shit. Mm -hmm. like, life got way hard. So, you know, the first thing that I, um, happened, I, I don't know if I've talked about it, it was 
as soon as I got out of rehab, I started dating a guy and got pregnant and ended up having an abortion like right out of, Damn. yeah, right out of rehab. And I was like, like that was the first lesson that I learned in sobriety was that, oh fuck. Have you had an abortion like, before that? No. Oh my God. No, no. But I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't want to even have sex, let alone have a fucking baby with this dude. Like yeah. it was a whole, it oh, was a whole yeah. thing. We talked about he was, that. Yeah. That's he was 13 uh, stepping like a uh, mother. Yeah. That recovery shit. That's like, um, by the way, if you are in active recovery and you step. are um, skeezing on, especially women that are trying to get sober, you're the worst of the worst. <laughs> Literally, you're just yeah. not good. Yeah. But but that was but it, the lesson was that very I learned very quickly was that holy shit mistakes happen in sobriety oh, yeah. too, mm -hmm. and like you can make huge what felt like a huge mistake at the time wasn't doesn't now. But, you know, you can make these huge mistakes in sobriety, too. And then it's like, oh, fuck, how, how am I going to, you know, now, now it's just how do you deal with it? Both me and Mark have done some dumb shit in recovery. I got arrested in I, recovery. In re I, I haven't been to a lot of recovery um, classes or anything of that sort, but I feel like I heard that they say that you shouldn't get in relationships. Oh, yeah, I know Is you that should. What yeah, like, like, like the first year. Is that a thing or am I year. just making this no, up? No, for sure. Yeah. I feel like I heard that. You don't want to like, especially the first year. Yeah, you want to be careful because, like, you know, <laughs> you, you want to put a trauma bond. Yeah, and you want to put someone between you and the mirror. Basically, like you're trying to get to know like who you are. They also um, say, I mean, well, there's I like, like that a, analogy. There's a lot of people too, and I struggled with this when I was four months sober. When I was eleven months sober, like I was really struggling with like suicidal ideology. Like I wanted to die. I was like, this is terrible. I can't do it. Like I was like, I didn't want to get drunk. I didn't want to be in recovery. I was like the hole in the donut, you know? <laughs> and somebody <laughs> said in a meeting one time, they were like, they're like, if you kill yourself in over re early recovery, it's like killing a stranger. Cause you don't know yourself. And I'm like, then I don't feel bad. It's like killing a stranger as deep. opposed <laughs> Yeah. I feel like I'm gonna, I kill I'm, strangers all the time. I feel like if I'm going to kill anybody, I would prefer to kill a stranger. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's why it like, didn't work. Kill I was yeah. like, I'm sorry, like, I'm just want to kill table. somebody I know. It's probably me pushing the table. I usually push the table. Uh, yeah, and well, that's like, um, but it's so easy to do though. I mean, I fell in love in rehab. Oh yeah, you know, because you find who'd you, you fall in love with in rehab? Uh, the love of my life. <laughs> was it a lady or a fella? It was it was a young man. Oh, okay. Uh, he was he was like ten years younger than me. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, just how old were you? Off your feet. Just oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> we fell in love. In was a he like? Was place. he like? Listen to this dubstep. <laughs> 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 yes. Oh my gosh! Yes. And then as soon as we got That's out of so rehab, funny. he was like, "Hey, do you want to um, take me to Fred Meyer so we can get some some wine?" Like, oh, <laughs> oh no. no. Any wine? That sucks. He was like, "Do you want to go get some Lucky Charms? It's my favorite <laughs> cereal." Okay, that I would. Maybe after that, we can go to the trampoline. Play. <laughs> yeah. Okay, those things sound better than wine. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, for sure. He was like, "Can you teach me how to drive?" <laughs> He did drive my car. Is that, it was, he did was that drive your my drink car. Of choice was wine your drink? No, of choice? I don't even know why they were doing this. They were just relapsing on like the wor the cheapest thing they could. I drank wine up. for a while. Did I was in like yeah, dude, the I box used to, wine? Like, yeah, or like oh, yeah. Mad Dog. I heard to, did I ever oh. tell that story? Yeah, I used to, <laughs> oh. steal, I used to steal Mad Dog. Ugh. Fucking sit in your tower. Le um, yeah, right. It's like Show fluorescent. Huh? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It like lights up under black light. It lit me up. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god, he just shut it was, up. It's like I'm drinking god. the sun. Dude, I'm no. having PTSD, like, yeah. massive. So no. gross. It's when so I got... It, like, it's furry. I used to get... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have fuzzy navel, which is one of the best flavors. It is Oh, furry. I could just slam a bottle of that shit. That and Boone's uh -huh. Farm. You know what? Let's fucking do it. No! Get the <laughs> wrong could you imagine if we relapsed? Oh, dude, we relapsed on I'm the podcast, 20, 20. all three of us. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, that'd be terrible. That would just like why is all that would just like help probably. I'd be like, oh no, 
This is never. This is so much fun. Oh, not like that. Never mind. I would get those. I'm just drinking a mad dog. This is so fun. I thought you. I thought you meant just like drinking with friends on a podcast. That's a good time. Apparently, the MD doesn't even stand for mad dog. It's supposed to be like the MD stands for. Like medicine dude no it's like some <laughs> french name Sam. what medicine dude <laughs> <laughs> medicine dude <laughs> it doesn't even like make sense yeah it does it's like what's in that bottle and you're like medicine dude <laughs> you want some oh my god no i was trying to i used to get those boxes of wine and I would take out, and they had the bag in them. Mm. And I remember being out on Trosper Road with my friend Sherry. And uh, Ryan Brown and Desmond, they all lived out there. I don't know why I said his last name. Um, and I would get that bag of wine, and I would, like, take off my shirt, and I would tape it to my shoulder. And then I'd pretend that I was, like, a wine cyborg. <laughs> and, <I'd be> like, <laughs> and then after... After I got sober, I had to go out there and make amends because and I was explain to them that you indeed were not a wine cyborg. <laughs> no, that's the thing. Let me oh, finish. I'm so I like I tape it to my. I'm like doing. I had to make amends for this other shit because I disrespected their house and all this stuff. Oh. And um, they were hella cool mm, though. They mm, were like, mm. Sam, we're just glad you're sober. Um, we're very proud of you. We love you. Like, and it was like a lot of the times when I would go make amends, I'd feel so bad. I remember making amends to you. And you were like, nah, man, it's okay. Like, you were, we were doing our thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't like, but um, when I made amends to Sherry, so we were like, we like, I make the amends, it goes really well. And we start like reminiscing. And I was like, I was like, dude, Sherry, do you remember that night where I like, I taped that bag of wine to my shoulder? And then we were all being like wine cyborgs. And she was like, that was just you. And you would not leave. <laughs> I'm like, I wouldn't go home. It's just so. you. I think that's a, a, a kind of a microcosm of how you just were in general. Like <laughs> you just thought that anything Everybody you were doing, was. we were all doing. It was like, <laughs> yeah, no, that was yeah. you, bro. Yeah. Did I ever, there was a guy when You're I was like, uh, remember when we were wearing bungee cord belts? <laughs> no. No, that was you, bro. No. <laughs> I did have a bungee cord <laughs> belt. Remember when we were wearing basketball shorts with, with Crocs all the time? Like, no. <laughs> yeah. no, it's just you. That's me right now. <laughs> just you. Yeah. It's like, it was us that wore. <laughs> Cleats around town, yeah. though, right? You no, know what's funny? Is <laughs> I remember when I was wearing like a bungee cord belt, and I was like, I bet people are really proud of my resourcefulness. <laughs> 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 I Redneck engineering. Me. Yeah. It was pretty good, though. It did fit perfect. It was the perfect length of bungee cord, so it didn't squeeze me too tight. But well, only for yeah. someone that was your size. For yeah. every, for Did you ever else. hang out with me when I jumped in the bay? Were you ever out there for that shit? <sighs> you know about that? Like the shallow part? No. The I this is great. The so shallow part. They have a they have a <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Anthony's, right? And you know in the summer and they do like the dining there? Mm -hmm. By I the radio to, station? By the radio station. So I would be out there with my football cleats and my overalls and um I'd, there'd be those guys on that eating food, and they'd be like, hey, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> All these people are eating, and I would turn, and I would run, and I would jump over the railing <laughs> and dive into the bay. And there was always, like, some waiter, and they'd be like, Sam, you're going to hit the rocks. I'm like, don't worry about it. It's high tide. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was worried. That's why I said shallow. You're yeah, just no. going to dive in and head first into like a mud flap and never, <laughs> and never come up. That's That'd like a, a fear unlocked for me. Like, oh. I don't want to be trapped in mud underwater. All of us grew up swimming in places we shouldn't have swam in. So that's this like an Olympia so true. thing. Yeah. Behind Mega Foods, uh, or where Barnes, oh, Barnes and God, Noble I can't is. I believe you went in there. Yeah, there's That's like, nasty. yeah. Wait, As did you kids, get stuck or something? No, we were just kids and we were just like really wanting a place to swim. So yeah. it was just like this. It's hot. This ditch of disgusting oh. water and glass. <laughs> just like leeches. Yeah, and yeah. us kids were in there. Oh. And then well, I remember this homeless guy came out of the bushes and he had five puppies. And now that I look back, I'm like, bro, we, that could have been trouble. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, "Come see our puppies," and we're like, "Yeah, where those and puppies come from?" <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I still still see that guy around town on the bus. His name's Bear. Do you know what I'm talking about? I probably do. Bear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you're talking. How about. How many dogs does he have? Well, now I'm not sure. Back then, five. 30, <laughs> 35 <laughs> years ago, he had like five. It was a long time ago. Why is there always a homeless person living in the world? I had, by the way, you know what's funny? As I had questions for you about like music stuff, and I still want to ask some of them. Um, oh, dude, what's the what's the worst gig you've ever done? The worst gig. So when you say worst gig, do you, do you mean like like a bad audience or worst like performance I ever did or um, your pick? Did you ever do a bar mitzvah? No, I remember doing a show at a festival in Mossy Rock. Oh my god! Oh my god! And like half, you and I had, a, I had a, I had a, Mossy Rock has like tons of tulips. And, oh. and apparently they're the second biggest tulip growing place besides Belgium. Oh. And it's because the volcano ashes um, make them grow hella. Yeah. So apparently that's a thing. Tulips. Yeah. yeah. Um, Volcanic soil. Huh. But half my, I had a band and half my band was blacked out drunk and the other half was on mushrooms and i was on mushrooms as well and so i don't i don't <laughs> even know what we like the sounds we were compiling at all like, i <laughs> i would love to be a fly on the wall and see what that actually looked like it's like the doors or whatever it like just <laughs> <laughs> you're just laying on the stage i like we could have all five just been doing our own thing up there <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> guys with the yo-yo and shit. Like, hey. so i mean that one's the first one that, that comes so that's to performance mind. wise like you felt like you oh yeah Otherwise, like, I don't really care about, like, how many people are there, if everybody's being assholes or whatever. Like, that doesn't impact me. I just want to share my music. It's more about, like, it's usually a bad show if I'm not happy with my performance. But I'm happy to perform in front of one person, a thousand people, whatever it is. You know? Yeah. Like, that doesn't really ever bother me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I've seen you. Uh, I've seen you in front of large crowds. I've seen you in front of small crowds. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, but never a medium crowd ever. Mm. What made you want to go after music like you do? Like, when did you fall in love with music? I don't think I had much of a choice. I really feel... I really feel like ancient drums in my DNA. I can totally tell that it's passed down. Like, I was 12 years old before I realized that there were people out there without rhythm. Really? Like, it was um. insane. Like, wait, you... You, you can't dance. Like, you literally cannot snap to this beat. Like, it was crazy. It's just so ingrained in me. And I think uh, it's so funny because my dad used to always be like, you need to come out and, and take over this landscape and business and, you know, the family lineage and da-da-da-da. And all along, he didn't realize I was answering another calling from the lineage. And yeah. It was yeah. the music yeah. side, you know, and now he's slowly starting to get it. Now my dad is like my biggest fan, which is interesting. You're pretty Aww. easy to root for these days. Thanks, buddy. You know what I mean? Like I, it's it's I been really it. fun. It's been really fun watching you. I feel That's like nice. I feel like I get that energy from a lot of my supporters out there these days. And it's a, you know, it's super inspiring and it, it, it only helps to continue. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. I um I want to do I gotta ask you something it's it's different because Mark he's only here this one uh, time I uh, did write jokes can okay. he read can he read them all you don't care do you I don't give a shit yeah, I don't I know I, I, don't you're gonna, even like that. I barely know how to read a rap. No. no, Jesus Lord, he doesn't he, want he, that. How he, said it up, he was like, he's only here. Once. Yeah, okay. This is weird. <laughs> but you rap. just do it. Just do it. He's got to see you do it. I can't wait for you to do these. No. I think these are my best. Way ones. better is you he, telling jokes. He, um, Mark, has Mark motivates me in a strange way, and I call him when I'm on the road when I'm not feeling good. Um, it's pretty cool. And sometimes I call him when I am feeling good. And sometimes I call him just because I see some dumb shit and I know we're going to laugh about it. That's like my favorite thing in the world. Me and Mark have seen like, 
I know that I can tell him stuff and he's not going to say anything, you know, and vice yeah. versa. Like, he's a good friend. We know. By the way, Olympia, we know all your shit. And oh, me and Mark, I just want you to know, me and Mark yeah. are laughing. We're laughing. We're not going to tell nobody, but Tom we're laughing. Street. <laughs> mm. All right. I wrote four jokes. And you get um, to tell them all. And you get to tell them all. So I have to read them before. Like right off first, or do I get to look at it and then say it? You can. He scan doesn't it like for you to read it. them. I don't want. You, actually, I'd like. I'd like you to read them because then I get your honest reaction. Okay, these are four jokes that I wrote this morning in twenty minutes between yes. getting my and then, two so kids. So you just up. like you just read one and then we like either laugh or don't. Which <laughs> don't usually, usually don't. don't. Usually just doesn't laugh. Okay. Number one. I don't know if my dog can sense earthquakes before they happen, but she definitely jumps off. But before I start fucking, <laughs> jumps off the bed. Did I finish it? She, she definitely no jumps way. off the bed. Oh, whoopsie, that was my fault. Yeah, she no definitely gets off before I start fucking. <laughs> no, 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 oh, no. God. Oh, God. No, oh, God. That's not because I don't and know. And then if he I, has me read it. No, I fucked like, it up. You should totally read this book. Um, I don't know if my dog can sense earthquakes before they happen, but she definitely jumps off the bed before I start fucking. <laughs> yeah, I just read that. I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I didn't have a word in there. I didn't have a word in there. Okay. One of the Real Housewives, um, you know how there was an earthquake in New York? Mm -hmm. um, she thought it was a ghost. And so she, <laughs> so she called 911. <laughs> 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 like, what are they going to do? <laughs> ghost cop. I can tell when I'm really depressed because somebody will talk shit online and I'll be like, damn, this dude is insightful. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a fun game. I know, it's pretty good. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. See, I told you yeah. these are good ones. Yeah. From one to ten, well, what was that though? That was not a joke. What is not a joke? <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. It was funny. It was the Sam joke. It was funny. You don't listen to like me to embarrass him in front of his friends. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Is gets, this true? Gets, I, don't, I don't like this that much. <laughs> I don't know why I do this. They say if a grizzly bear is attacking you, that you should play dead. It's also good practice. <laughs> so, uh, okay, that was funny. <laughs> I think right now that one's winning. Really? You think that was good? What was, was I can't good. remember. So you know what's fun too is I have no short-term memory at all. And so like, I'm like, you like, say it, I'm like, I'm like, time. that's a good joke. <laughs> yeah, I like that. This is good in my style, man. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever wrote this that guy is right. amazing. <laughs> okay, number four. Number four. Texas was mad when Alaska became a state because they weren't the biggest anymore. I think they all got together. Let's all wear silly hats. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be the biggest state, but you can be the silly hat state. The big. Does Alaska have silly hats? No, but they're bigger. So, like, Texas's thing used to be. That's the way I try to construct that was. But wouldn't uh, Alaska have to have silly hats? Oh, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to do this, Mark. You're not allowed to do this. Well, oh, the, sorry. We didn't tell you all of the rules. You're as not, a song. Ah, you're not allowed song to do It's not a right. fucking Mark, song, Mark. It's Mark. a joke. But as, this isn't, Mark, we're not no, in the studio. No, Mark. They say in a movie, like, anything you put in a mo movie, Mark, that everything no. after you put that thing in should be impacted by that thing. So... Oh when you use God. silly hats, oh, it's just making it worse. We gotta go. Texas it's and Alaska's—they—they <laughs> they are very. They're both big. You're right. I I over. Alaska's bigger, and that is why the joke was constructed the way it was. Yikes. I don't go into the studio and be like, Mark, that doesn't rhyme. Please don't come into you our know why? studio because it, it rhymes. Because it rhymes. Because it makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes Thank I'll be you. honest, Mark, and this is just me being honest. Um, sometimes some of the rhymes you make, I, rhyme. sometimes it's weird. Yeah, I said it. Wow. See, I was just willing to help you find a silly hat that Alaskans <laughs> wear, and then we can make this work. <laughs> <laughs> we could have 
worked on this together. He said we're gonna make this work. You <laughs> just, <laughs> but you just, you just chose violence. <laughs> <laughs> Remember back in the day where we had that plan where we were gonna fake beef with each other and get like Olympia all pissed off? Is Not that yet. true? Do you remember that? Yeah, we were talking about doing that. I mean, I'm I I wouldn't put it past us. I had a lot of memories that were lost to blacked out now. <laughs> yeah, uh, really, it, it's so sad. It really uh, it hurts my heart sometimes. I do wonder too all the shit that I missed out on. Yeah, I did some stuff. I, I, I I've heard about some stuff I did. It you know what I fun. used to do is I used to steal shit, and people would be like, "Dude, Sam, you stole my shit," and I was like, "Sorry, I was blacked out. I don't remember doing that, but I did." remember doing it <laughs> you know what's scary because there's like beef. two different type of blacked out like if i get blacked out i like immediately go to sleep i'm the guy mm -hmm. that would just disappear and just go to sleep and everyone's like where'd mark go and i'm just like the guy I always went to sleep but there are the people that could get blacked out and Do then stuff. last another six yeah, hours as a host body yeah <laughs> yeah know? that's and they're just like oh, that's doing when, things and that's like, when jolene has arrived <laughs> jess, is, uh -oh. jess is no longer in in here you're now dealing with jolene and you don't want to. It's not good. I really wish I had an alternate ego. Yeah. Like that. I should have created a name. It was Do you have one? Mm -hmm. What was your alternate ego when you... Ears were good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that was my alternate ego. <laughs> <laughs> Who put this vomit on me? Gross. Dude, you know what's Here's gross? Good. <laughs> Dude, good. I woke up. I woke up one morning out in the woods, <laughs> and I like, I like wandered out of the woods, and I was like, "Oh, I'm out on Marvin Road." And I went over to my friend Bubba's house, and I was like, "Dude, I was out in the woods. What happened?" You know? And he's like, "I don't know, dude." And then I was like, <laughs> "Let's go get some weed." <laughs> and then like we're like going to the <laughs> weed guy's house, and then I'm in Bubba's truck, and I'm like, "Dude, you stink so bad, like puke." dude you stink so oh bad oh my like, gosh dude. and then we went and did some other shit and i was like dude i dude, we were in the store together i was like dude you fucking reek dude we were like buying cigarettes or whatever and then like it was like two how weeks could you later. be so mean though? no there's mm -hmm. a thing two weeks later i was like uh i went into that same that chevron on ruddle um and the guy was like dude sam i gotta talk to you <laughs> like he's like you came in here two weeks. He's like, you can't come in here like that. <laughs> They're like the whole right side of your hair was just like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I thought it was like. Because <laughs> I, I had that. I, I had that what? long. I had long hair sometimes. I looked crazy back in the day. I was Especially not looking full good. Of vomit. Yeah, I was not looking good. Remember, I always had like my ankle. Was and you didn't hurt. even know it was in your hair because you were blocked out. Yeah, I had no <sighs> idea. I still have no idea what happened. That's kind of. I've had something similar like that happen where I yeah. woke up at. Uh, there was a, a like a hip hop DJ party, and I ended up blacked out and passed out on the couch. And then I woke up in the morning. Everyone's asleep. And I was like, I'm gonna walk home. I'm so hungover, and I'm walking home, and I'm walking past Rambling Jacks, and I look into the window. And my whole face has penis, like, oh, oh, no. over oh, my face. I got penis drawing. <laughs> and I'm walking home in the middle of the city, and, like, half of my walk had no clue. And then the rest of it, like, I just had to, like, take all the back were alleys you, and stuff. But Were you working at Ramblin' Jags then? Uh, with the company, for sure. Yeah, yeah, Adam. Yeah. He hired everybody, man, that dude. Um, I liked him. He was nice to me. When I got sober, he's a job I had. I was washing dishes and shit like that. I was washing dishes and I was bouncing at McCoy's. At the same time? Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I used to hate that shit, man. I'd have to go to work. And, you know, when you wash dishes and, like, the apron didn't fit me because I'm fat. Yeah. And so, like, it only went down my middle. <laughs> and so, like, my kidneys would get hella wet. And I'd be in front of McCoy's because I didn't want to be out there. And I wanted to smoke my cigarettes and shit. And I had cold kidneys. Cold and then kidneys. some shit would go down, and I'd be like, "Man, now I gotta fight this dude with my cold ass kidneys." <laughs> like, it this just looks sucks. like armpit swear down yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing I'll say this about Mark, man. He always had my back, man. Shit would go down. Mark was fucking there, man. It was wild back in the day. It's cold easy, it's easy to get your back, though, brother. Yeah, yeah. Vice versa. Well, no shit, because you're fucking seven foot tall. I'd have your back, too. would be like, well, oh, yeah, Sam, I got your back. Because you would never have to do anything. Mm, Sam would always have it taken dude, care of. Yeah, it's got numbers, man. The weird we thing about our friendship is I've never seen Sam fight. 
You've never seen me. Yeah, fight. because he doesn't what about have to. Who's Royal? gonna fight I don't him? Didn't you see some shit at McCoy's? Didn't you see some shit at McCoy's? No, you weren't there for any of those. No, I know you're probably out on the patio when that shit. Yeah, probably. Out. Like I never left the patio. Like, yeah, yeah. That's I don't like to fight. I don't like to fight. I've never been like a violent dude at all. Like I've never been that dude. But also, like, you know what's weird is it? I are you super I, soft? Like, no, it's weird. Like, what? I'm not scared. Like. I'm not scared of, like, physical, like, fighting and shit like that. Like, in fact, when I'm angry, like, it sucks that that's what I go to is, like, mm. I, I think about putting my hands on people when I'm angry. But, like, I don't do it because that's how I was raised is it like, at, at a certain point you're done talking and then you got to, like, fight a motherfucker. And, like, I don't, I don't like that and I won't do that and I refuse to, like, participate in that culture. And you're, like, too big. Like, yeah, you yeah. Could, yeah. Like, really? somebody will shoot me <clears throat> is yeah, what will happen. Exactly. And that's what, by the way, that has, um, you know that story about, I think I've told that story before, but I was out at a house party one time. In you got to look at Jess every once in a while, yeah. too. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> I don't care. I've, I've left. I've left. <laughs> I don't give a uh, shit. <laughs> well, I want to tell two stories real quick because oh, I know Lord. Mark. I think Mark knows both these, but I've never talked about any either of these. But do you know the thing about the Fourth Ave Tavern and me getting in trouble? Um, I uh, I was at the Fourth Ave Tavern. It was like three p.m. on like a Wednesday or Thursday. I had a friend who was bartending. I had money then. I was doing a forest service gig, um, and I don't remember this at all. But I like. I mean, I semi remember it, but I, uh, I went into the bathroom to pee, like just random drunk pee, no big deal. I pull it out, I start peeing, and then all of a sudden, there's this guy in front of me, and he's like, "What the fuck?" And this dude jumps up and turns around. I'm like, "Oh shit, da, da, da. dude!" There was this like really short dude who was like peeing oh at the my urinal, God. and I didn't see him, oh. and I just went behind him. <laughs> And peed oh, on man. his back while he was being. Um, that must have been the most hopeless feeling grieving. for him because he's there's, he's not going to be able to do anything dude, about this it. This is the funniest thing is like you know I'm a nice guy and I was like man like I'm in nice. uh, this time I'm in the wrong. <laughs> like, You're like we, we could trade shirts. Out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like <laughs> the thing is, is like this dude. I'm like out at the bar and I'm like Chris, dude. He's a bartender. We went to job court together too. I was like Chris. Dude, I'm so sorry. I didn't see him. I'm not trying to be like weird or anything. And the guy is just like, you know, he's like, I know I'm new to this town, but this is bullshit. And you, you should kick him out. And I was like, dude, I will leave. Um, I should get kicked out. And he's like, Chris is like, um, dude, it was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be kicking him out every time he pees on he someone. He's like, Sam's got money. <clears throat> yeah. And then the other one was out in Little Rock at that house party where um, I think you knew. It was on like Little those Rock Road? Yeah. No, no, no. Way out. Like in Little Rock. Mm. Yeah. And there was this place. They called it the Stabbing Cabin. It was like um, these dudes, Headless Pez, those guys. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? There was like Robbie. And I used to party with those guys in on the east side of Olympia. And they had that black house on Wilson Street. Another porch couch that I lived on. Those are my two porch mm. couches. Yours, I was cheating on you with. Which one was couch. more comfortable? Though? Yours, because mm -hmm. I can sleep with your dog. And um, did theirs have like an overcover that protected yes. you from rain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yours had oh. the had the warmest dog, and um, I love that dude. Yeah, me and that dog. Me, I miss your. Dog. And we're right next to. And I know you miss your dog too, but um, the um, I was out at this house party, and there was I got drunk. And there was a loft with a catwalk between it. And everybody's still partying. I'm up in the loft. And I don't know whether I thought it was funny. I don't know. I know I was blacked out. I know I don't remember doing it. But I went out onto that catwalk and just started peeing off the catwalk. Okay. okay. Everybody was partying like below oh, me. Oh my gosh. And my pee was hitting like the, they had cross railings. And my pee was hitting the cross railings. And just, just splattering? And just <laughs> splattering. And I seriously peed on 15 people or something like that. And, like, there was this dude out there named Ian. You're who, like R. Kelly. Yeah, Ian, yeah. That's Ian, fucking terrible. Ian, who was at the time also um, 
he was up to some stuff. He's a good guy, but um, definitely like up to stuff or whatever. I don't want to go into details because I know people <laughs> listen to this podcast. <laughs> um, Ian, like all this is what I remember is I was walking down this dark driveway and I turn around and Ian's got a gun on, gun to my head and he's just like he's like I'm not fighting you. No, I'm, I'm not fighting you. Like I will shoot you. I will. He's like, Sam, if you, uh, he's like, I care about you as a person, but he's like, I will end your life if you try to fight me. And I remember thinking, I'm like walking, right? And I'm looking and there's like these, there was like a big limb on the ground. I was like, because part of me was like, man, like, like I really didn't want to live that bad. I was like, it's such a dark place, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, I should grab that limb. I want to get that gun. I want that gun. All I knew is that I really wanted that gun. And I was like, I wonder if I could turn around and grab it. You've probably been thinking about this moment forever. Just oh, disarming dude. someone. Yeah, yeah. I've seen like, so many it. ninja videos. You're yeah, like, this yeah. is the moment. I'm going to do it, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, what was crazy is it, unfortunately, like, um, I didn't do it, which is good, and I didn't get shot, which is good. I called my mom, and I'm like, I'm out in Little Rock. She and came and got you. Yeah, because yeah, I was pretty young. She yeah. came and uh, got the gun. And I, <laughs> um, and Ian, you know what's cool is that two days later, I talked to Ian and we made up. I was like, dude. It's not Ian Abel. No, not Ian Abel. I'm no. all just saying last no. names when you yeah, tried yeah. not to. No, no, no. It's not Ian. Because I'll tell you why. You'll know it's not Ian here in a second. Because, like, I talked to him and me and him were cool. And he explained it to me. He was like, Sam, he's like, you're six foot six. You're 360 pounds. You're blacked out drunk. And you're trying to fight me at my house. That's and how you he's, like, he's like, I'm not going. I would never fight you in, like, a, like a fight. It's just, it's not your you know he's like i'm so like that's what happened that's why i did that and i had to be like yeah. i was like yeah dude i get it like mm -hmm. I'm, we're good dude like i told him that shit i was like you don't have anything to apologize for and i'm sorry i disrespected your house and i peed on all those people sorry, and I, sorry i made you almost shoot me yeah yeah and then um ian died two weeks after that Ian overdosed two weeks after that and i'm really glad that i made up with him so yeah that's how you know it's not that enabled. is not <laughs> the ending i was expecting. i know me neither me neither that's what it is, dude. That's what it is. Do you think if he had shot you? a lot of peace stories. Yeah. No, those are pretty much it. Yeah, I can't think of any other urine stories. I peed on my friend Miles' oh my leg while he was talking to some girls one time. But uh -huh. That's because he poured hot dog water on my head while I was talking to some girls. Uh -huh. so we had this thing going I know on. some people who smell like hot dog water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Speaking of lunch, I gotta Rob. go. Rob, yeah, um, we gotta go. Anything else? Thank you, you so say? much, Mark, for coming and hanging out. Absolutely, I want everybody to come out April twenty seventh to the Capitol Hill Comedy Slash Bar for the Stone Bubble album release. Um, give me a follow on Instagram, aka Hip Hop three six zero, and Facebook. What were you gonna say? I'm a VIP, and I've heard the whole album. And um, there are no spots on that album that I was not impressed by. And there was five or six songs that, um, I mean, every song is good, but there was like five or six songs where I was like, wow, this is, this is Mark doing the best, best he's ever done in making music. And that's saying something because you've been making a music, good music for a long time. So, nice. And also just like on a <clears throat> real short caveat about it, like, I had been making music my whole life. I, I, like I said, I just feel like it's just in my DNA, but I never really got to be free with it because first of all, I was a blackout alcoholic. And then when I got sober, I released Chip in a Chair, which was my first album being sober, but it was always within the confines of getting sober, right? So as freeing as the album was, it wasn't as free as it could be because it was always within this confines of sobriety. And now that like I've got my thumb on my sobriety and just working really hard at it and I'm really kind of past the uh, it absorbing my whole life, you know, type thing. <laughs> this is really the first album in my life. I've been making music for about 25 years where, like I said earlier, that I actually got to frolic in the tall grass mm -hmm. fields of music. I wasn't thinking about alcohol. I wasn't thinking about this, that. I literally just got to be like, I have the whole world right in front of me to make music. And that's why I really believe that this project uh, turned out the way it did. And it's 20 songs. Yeah, it's so a lot, yeah, man. you're gonna be able to get a lot, and I mean every single song I'm proud of. Anytime you see a CD, CDs hold 75 minutes, right? Mm. If you get a 48 
minute album from somebody, they should prorate it, right? Like you got to fill up the whole album. Mm. You have like 48 minute albums being the same. How long? What is the runtime? Of my album? Mm -hmm. 71 minutes. Yeah, that's wild. Nice. Yeah, it's a lot of music. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to it was good to have you here, yeah, and uh, we'd like fun. to have you again. So absolutely, yeah. Yeah. that was an absolute honor, and I loved it. And, it uh, and now I have come back and hang out with us. Formulated a mood, and I'm happy. <laughs> oh, good! Yay! Good. All right, that's Yay! It. All righty. Thanks for listening. Bye. Peace, gang. Bye.